it's Deborah Poneman, founder of Yes to Success, where we share knowledge and tools for you to live your ultimate life and ageless anti-aging for your brain, your body, and your future. And one of the things I've noticed lately is that people are more and more willing to look at their fears and face them. I've noticed that folks aren't just blindly going through life, but they're pausing and they're noticing and they're course correcting in so many different ways. In fact, in my success circle program that I offer for my advanced students, I mean, you're all advanced students, but these are students that have taken Yes to Success and Yes to Success 2.0. Anyway, in Success Circle, we are discussing what was keeping us from self-realization. And I mean, real, true self-realization, like you used to think was a state of awareness reserved only for yogis in the Himalayas. And I shared that I believe what was keeping us from going all the way to the mountaintop are actually two things. One as Byron Katie would say, is loving what is, accepting and in fact, loving the perfection of every moment. And two, I think it's lack of willingness to face what scares you. I really believe that those scary things that show up on our path are our greatest gifts because when we face them, we find on the other side that we really are one step closer to our own self-realization. And in my class, when I asked everyone who was really committed to go for the gold, even if it meant stepping outside that comfort zone and feeling discomfort, every hand went into the air. So not only do I see that people are more willing to step outside their comfort zones, I also see that people are letting themselves dream and they've become more committed to their dreams and they know that if they play it safe living their dreams might not become a reality as i'm sure you've heard so many teachers say if you're not scaring yourself every day you are not thinking big enough and something my friend mary pat knight of leaders inspired says when you do something outside your comfort zone not only is that where your success lies but your comfort zone expands. So if this is your comfort zone and you do something here, now you're, and you've realized it wasn't that big a deal. Now your comfort zone is this big. Then you do something here, not a big deal. Now your comfort zone is this big. So the remarkable reward of constantly doing things outside your comfort zone is that doing the hard stuff starts becoming easy when you get that momentum going. But then there comes a point when you're called on to take the big risk, the one where you really need to, for example, stand up for your truth and risk something big like everyone's approval. I was actually on a call with the diversity committee of the Transformational Leadership Council a while ago. And we were talking about how one of the greatest reasons we don't stand in our truth is that we're afraid that we might lose friends or clients. So we do this dance to try and please all the people all the time, which basically will never work. It's just not possible. The wonderful teacher, Lisa Nichols, uh, shared something that really struck the heart of what this is about. And she said, the times demand that you evict the need to protect your image. You evict the need to protect your image. So what does that mean, evict the need to protect your image? Well, it's a scary thing to do, but it doesn't look like this. You know, I am totally supportive of, for example, how Black Lives Matter, but I'm not going to say it to my community or on my podcast. What if I lose the people who aren't into equity and inclusion and social justice? So basically what you're saying is that you're willing to forgo the impact for the future of our planet that you sharing your position can have in order to protect your database. But have you noticed that people who change the world don't play it safe. It doesn't take courage to be silent and it's not convenient to speak up, but truth is never convenient and growth is never convenient. Lisa uh, goes on to say, um, I think this is pretty much a quote. She says, this I know for sure, for every seven people who leave your database, 70 will come in if you stand in your truth. 
when I made the commitment years ago to stand on my truth, I'm sure I lost a lot more than seven, but I'm sure I gained something even greater than 70 new people on my mailing list. I gained self-love and self-respect. And I was telling the universe, I know you will provide for me if I do what I feel is right, even if others disagree. If you stand up for your truth, whatever that is, and lose friends, are those really the friends you want in your life anyway? If you lose followers, are those really your people anyway? And it's not that I want people to leave my community who have different worldviews than I do, because everyone is absolutely entitled to his or, or her own political view, social view, worldview. And I'm not right. And they're not wrong. And it doesn't mean we can't love each other and learn from each other. But the point is that I used to stay silent because I wasn't okay with people not liking me. And I am so fine with it now. I'm not fine with being silent about things like inequality or anyone thinking that they are better than or more worthy than anyone else. No, I'm not fine with that at all. But I know that it takes courage to be brave and stand up for your truth when it can affect your livelihood. But courage and bravery don't come with convenience. Again, if it's true conviction, it will cost you something. The greatest cost could even be your life. So so what? I think we all agree that this bag of bones is not the end of the line. You know, many teachers say that fear shows up not because you're on the wrong path, but because you're on the right path. If you're not afraid, you're probably not playing big enough. You're probably not doing what you were put on earth to do. Fear shows up as you get closer and closer to making your true contribution to the world. And no one promised any of us that life would be easy or safe. But when you overcome the big challenges, when you face the really scary stuff, that's when the greatest growth takes place. And if the truth be known, ultimately, we're not doing what we do for outcomes anyway. We're doing it for the personal growth that takes place on the way to the outcome, whatever the outcome turns out to be. And we do what we do to learn to trust our inner voice, our intuition, to do what our intuition is asking us to do, even if it's scary. You know, sometimes people say to me, but I don't know what my intuition wants me to do. <laughs> yes, you do. You just don't want to do it sometimes because intuition is not linear. And sometimes what that voice tells us to do seems unreasonable or, as we say, scary. But when you listen you're putting the outcome in the hands of that intelligence that knows exactly what he, she is doing. One of my favorite quotes in the Bible is uh, Psalm 126 that says, when man says, show me and I will trust you, God says, trust me and I will show you. So remember that trick I talked about last week? Well, next time you're in a situation when you're faced, where you're faced with something really scary or you're afraid to take a step or a stand, Stop, locate where the fear or the tension is in your body. Is it in your throat? Is it in your heart? Is it in your gut? Breathe into it and then ask what that tension is there to tell you. I promise there will be a message. The first time it might be difficult to follow the promptings of that message, but you will re be rewarded so generously if you do that you won't be able to wait until the next time it speaks to you. And each time you follow that voice, it will get easier and easier. And then it starts being fun. You just have to surrender and trust. And finally, a quote that my son once shared with me that is one of my favorites. He said, quote, you relax on a plane, even though you don't know the pilot. You relax on a ship, even though you don't know the captain. You relax on a bus, even though you don't know the driver. Why don't you relax in life knowing that the creator is in control? Just saying, have a great week.